This peanut butter granola is so good. Come on, I'll show you how to make it. This peanut butter granola recipe has only seven ingredients, so I'm gonna get started measuring things out. My first step was to get a small pot of water simmering on the stove because we're going to heat some peanut butter and maple syrup in a double boiler over that pot. So right now I'm measuring out half a cup of peanut butter. This doesn't need to be exact. So don't come at me if it doesn't look perfect. But I've got about half a cup of peanut butter in here. I like to use natural peanut butter, not the stuff with extra weird fats and sweeteners added to it. And now I'm going to add a quarter cup of maple syrup. And then this is gonna go into a bowl. And I'm going to set this over top of my simmering water just so that we can get this heated through and nicely incorporated together. I first made this recipe because we were trying a low FODMAP diet in our household for a little while, um, just to see if it would help with some of the digestive issues that some of the people in our home have. FODMAPs, if you don't know what those are, they are types of carbohydrates. So FODMAP is an acronym that stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So basically these sugars are found in pretty much anything. It's not like you can just avoid a handful of foods and you're fine. You can find them in fruits and vegetables and grains, different sweeteners, all kinds of stuff. And so it was a steep learning curve to figure out what things we could have, what things we couldn't, but I got a lot of resources online and also from cookbooks from the library. And this is one of the recipes that I got from a library cookbook that everybody in the family actually really liked. So even though we are not following low FODMAP anymore, I'm still making some of the recipes that we used when we were doing a low FODMAP diet. Okay, that's getting nicely mixed together. So my next step is to add half a teaspoon, no, not half a teaspoon, a whole teaspoon of cinnamon and vanilla to this. And then I'm just gonna leave it, well, I'll mix it together, but then I'm gonna leave it to heat up a little more while we go mix our dry ingredients together. So let's move back over to the other counter and we'll get the dry ingredients mixed. I just left my peanut butter mixture to heat a little bit longer. So while that's heating through, I'm going to mix the last three ingredients together here. So I have two cups of gluten-free oats. If gluten's not an issue for you, then you can just use regular rolled oats. Um, about a cup of pumpkin seeds and half a cup of, what are these? <laughs> Sunflower seeds. Uh, I'm going to mix these all together. And then I'm just going to go get my peanut butter mixture and get it all mixed up together in here. You could just use your spatula or a wooden spoon to mix this, but I do like using this Danish whisk because it tends to not let things clump up and stick together too much. So you're just gonna keep mixing this through until the peanut butter is no longer clumped together, but it's 
nice and evenly coated over those rolled oats and seeds. Now what I'm gonna do is spread this on my baking sheet. I don't like doing dishes that much. And so rather than greasing my pan, I just cover it in parchment paper. And when I'm done, I don't have to wash the pan. I can just throw the paper away if it's too dirty to be reused, or I can save it again because baking something like this, it's probably not going to be too much of a mess to be used again. Just get it spread as thinly and evenly as you can. A little bit of clumps are okay. And then you're gonna put this into a 325 degree oven. And I've already got my oven preheated, so let's get it in there. So my granola has been cooking for about 13 minutes here in the oven. And this one's a little hard to know when is it actually done, because the recipe says bake it until it's starting to brown, but you just coated it in a bunch of brown stuff. So it's kind of hard to know when things are actually browning, but I can smell it. I can smell cinnamon and peanut butter. So for me, that's a good indication that we're nearing the end point here. So I'm gonna pull it out now. Now I need to let this cool, and as it cools, it's going to harden up, get a little bit crispy. Once it's room temperature, it's gonna be ready to eat. The granola cooled off. It only took about 15, 20 minutes. So I've moved it into some containers for easy storage, and it's ready to eat. You can see that it stayed clumped together. It's gotten a little bit crispy now that it's cooled off. And some of the ways we like to eat this, you can just eat it like cereal. So throw it in a bowl with some cow's milk or nut milk, whatever you prefer. I also like having it just with plain Greek yogurt. So I'll grab a handful and sprinkle it on top. And this is an awesome snack for afternoon. Or I've also enjoyed having it with a banana. So I'll take the banana out of the peel, slice it up on a plate, and then I just sprinkle some granola on top. It's a really delicious peanut butter banana treat. So. I'm curious if you try it, how you like to eat it, and thank you for watching. If you're curious about this Danish whisk that I was using to mix stuff with, you can find a link for this in the description below. It's great for mixing clumpy stuff like this, dough, batter. It's really good at combining ingredients without sticking and making a mess. So I'd recommend you give one of those a try. I'll see you next time. So good.